Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. On uh, behalf of the NSCAA, I'd like to thank you for um, being here this morning. What you're going to witness this morning is a technical and tactical session of the progression of going from U9 players up to U13 players. My name is Bill Stara. I used to coach high school here in Maryland at River Hill High School and Centennial High School, and I've also been a club director for a couple of different clubs. I asked to do the session this morning um, to the state of Maryland, and I want to thank them. My assistant is um, Michael Green behind me, who's one of my staff coaches for my club. Michael comes to me from um, Columbia, Maryland, played his college soccer at the University of Virginia, and then he went on to play for the Kansas City Wizards. What we're trying to show you this morning is as we've gone from large sized games down to small sided games, we like to help coaches and players understand the progression that you go through to make life simple so that you're able to compete and play at a higher level of play. It's a simple game, but we have to understand with the mental outlook that players like we have here behind us, how to approach the tactical and technical session as far as making sure they can understand it. So what you're going to see here this morning is we're going to start off playing eight versus eight, show you some of the diamond shapes within that formation, and then we're going to break it down and go all the way back to the beginning and show you how you can actually build up from four versus four with goalkeepers all the way up to eight versus eight. Because whenever you play against a quality team, those kids just didn't come out and be able to perform magic on the field unless they've had the proper environment to actually be nurtured, allow them to experiment with things, but more importantly, allow them to understand the game. So that's what we're hopefully going to show you here this morning. What we've done is we've set up the field beforehand so that we have to do as little manipulation of the field as possible. This training session that you're going to see this morning is one in which you can't go home next week and actually do every progression. This is supposed to be a progression that you would go through over the next two or three years where if you've got them at U12 or U13 and having difficulty understanding one part of the game, that we as So what you're going to see here this morning is up in eight versus eight and then slowly breaking it down. And I've got to check here with my mic to make sure it's okay. Oh, excuse me a second. Test one, two. 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 <clears throat> what we've asked the two teams to do is to play two different formations. So what you will notice is the team going towards that end zone that is in blue, they'll be playing with players in the back, three across the midfield, and two players up top. The green team key competing against them will play with three players in the back, three midfielders, and only one striker. 
whatever system of play in which you evolve into, as long as it matches the ability level of your players, it's okay. But I wanted to show two different types of systems to actually work through and show you how we can evolve into that. So we'll just observe them play here about the first one or two more minutes because every training session that I do, what I realize is once I get the session going, the best thing for me to do as a coach is go to drink a water. Let them play for two or three minutes and then after they've got a light sweat going and they're into the session, then we can start to stop them and start to show them some things. So we'll let them go here about another two or three minutes and then we'll um, stop them for a second. And gentlemen, if you would just stop where you're at, please. If you would just stop where you're at. And if you would sift yourself out and get ready for the next ball to be played in, that would be great. And let's play. And stop. Stop. If you notice the blue team, they do have two players in the back, three across the midfield, and two up top. Blue team, if you could do me a favor and just drop down onto one knee. Just drop down onto one knee. Here's ideally what we'd like to show you. If you would stand for me, if my central midfielder would stand, if my forward would stand, and if my outside midfielder would stand. If you look at the shape in which they now present to us, it's a very simple, it's a diamond. That's the foundation that we're eventually going to have to get back to to do our coaching and our teaching. Gentlemen, if you would go down to one knee again. If you would stand for me, stand, stand, and stand. If you notice, there's a mirror image on the left-hand side of the same sort of diamond. So if we can compress two diamonds together and explain to them the importance of the diamond, they will now start to understand their own spatial awareness out on the field. The last thing that I want to do is lock a player into, you're the right back. Because all that that kid then goes through the rest of his life is, I'm a right defender. But what happens if one player makes an overlapping run and the outside midfielder has to take over his role? He has to understand the responsibilities, not necessarily the position, but what, re what responsibilities every person has out on the field. Gentlemen, are we ready? Go ahead, play. And stop. If we would put the ball back there to the player playing on the right side, let's look at it for the green team. We've got three defenders here. We've got three midfielders and one target player. If you gentlemen could go down onto one knee, that would be great. If you notice, we've got diamonds again. If you would stand and you would stand, if my forward would stand, and now my central midfielder stands, if you notice there's a diamond, if you could play the ball to your partner across the field, all the way across here behind me. Yep. And now if you guys would go down onto one knee, you stay up, stay up, stay up, stay up. We've got the diamond shape again. That basic concept 
will be the main concept through this whole progression, that if they can understand the diamond shape and the spatial awareness, all kind of magical things will happen by the time that we end this session. Gentlemen, are we ready? Go ahead and play. <clears throat> now, the one thing that we will not be able to do today, we will not be able to go over shooting, passing, and every type of thing in which we can incorporate into this game. Our main thing is for us to find coaching points. Coaching points in explaining how do you play with the diamond and how do you progress. And we'll stop it one or two more times to point out some of the main things I'm going to pick on when we come here into the flat cones that you coaches see in front of you. If you notice the field and ignore the game for a second, you've got the rectangle, but what we've placed here at midfield are two grids. That's where we're coming back to very shortly to start the progression of four versus two and slowly building back up to this game, which will be our end result again. So we'll let them play here another minute or two so I can put out some coaching points. Play on. Whoa, well finished. A little help from your friend. And stop. Gentlemen, please. Let's go back with the ball to the outside back there. And let's play the ball wide for a second. To the same midfielder. What we will notice within the four-on-four -four games, as we will notice here, is we want to look at his body language. How is he facing when he receives the ball so that it takes him minimal number of touches to be able to play positive? If you notice, when he first received it, he was facing back towards his own defender. What we are going to talk about is, is if you look as he stands now, he's more side on. So that when the ball is played in front of him, if he needs to, he can play safe by playing back. But if he can, he can play positive by seeing the rest of the field in front of him and in front of him. Let's play the ball back here to the defender. And from there, let's go with the same pass. And we're live on the first touch. Go ahead, you're on. Yep, wherever you choose to play. As you watch them, watch their spatial awareness. Can they make space for themselves? What you'll usually notice at this age is they will mark themselves out of the game. Feel comfortable going and standing with somebody on the opposing team instead of starting to spread themselves out. And we will have to fix that when we start playing four versus two. And keeper, hold the ball, please. The other thing in which you're going to notice, whether we play 2-3-2 two, three, two, or 3-3-1, three, three, is that I would like the defenders to be pushed up and playing in the game. I don't want them to have the support of a sweeper at the age of 9 and 10. The reason why? I want them to be matched up one versus one. To be perfectly honest, I have not ever in my club fired a U9 coach for losing the session. All that I've asked him is, did you take him out for ice cream afterwards? If you allow them to play one-on-one -on -one in the back over one, two, three years, they will develop that cat house game of how to defend one versus one. But if they're always blessed with the sweeper behind them, they can step up and make mistakes any time that they want. Why? There's always somebody behind them. If you can allow them to play one versus one, and they're not afraid to make mistakes, they will develop much quicker as players. So, Michael, if you could, if we could bring them all over here into this grid. Gentlemen, if you would, just line up right on that scene, and Michael will get you set up here in a second. All of us have, in our training sessions, hopefully opened up maybe with five versus two or four versus two to loosen up kids. My question to you is, do you use that same activity to do your coaching? Or do you just coach the activity? 
what I would like to show you is when they jump into these grids, there's a couple key coaching points that we want to emphasize with them. So even during my warm-up, which is a phase in which we're going to start with, we're doing our teaching within the activity. It's four versus two. This is coming back down to the building block of our diamond shape. That's why we will have four attackers and two defenders in the two grids. If you notice, there's a neutral zone in between the two of them so that we can have the coach stand there, all the equipment should be there, and we can just keep the games flowing. So, gentlemen, we have four blues in this side playing against two greens. Greens, as soon as you win the ball, as soon as you win the ball, you're going to just find Michael and play it to his feet. Over here, we have four greens playing against two blues. As soon as you win the ball, you play to Michael's feet. Our reserve players, after they get a drink, Michael, will have them right in behind you, and then we'll rotate them. And gentlemen, let's go ahead and play. So with every session, we will let them get started and let them see if they can figure it out. My job as a coach is to basically just create the environment for them to play, have fun, and if they're having difficulty, now it's my time to jump in. We'll let them play, see what they go with, and then we'll start to pick out coaching points. Stop. Now, if you look at the first grid here, the two blues have closed the grid down by about three or four yards. What we would like you guys to do is use the space as much as you can. How about if all four of us start off, just go stand in the corner, just like you're at school. <clears throat> now, how many passes do you need to have so that you feel comfortable playing this game? Okay, if you've got four passes, point them out to me. Go ahead, point them out to me. There's one. Play it back to them. Show me another one. There's two. Good. Any more that you got? Oh, if he moves over there and moves off that cone, magic. Magic. There's three. So how about if you guys get ready to play again, use the space well, and let's go ahead and play. Go ahead, play. Now, watch their body language when they receive the ball. Do they open themselves up to the game, or do they close themselves into one side? Stop. Notice the two passes here. They played in between themselves. Each time that they received it, let me take your spot one time. Play me this ball. He turns and he faces this way, which almost eliminates this pass where if we just take another half a step over here, let it run across my body, now I've got one here, one here, and I can go back to the same space if I'd like to. So let's play here. Here, you step in for me. It's live, gentlemen, on the first touch of him. We ready? Go ahead, play. Now, even with the four-on-two game, we have to make this meaningful for the two defenders. Because if I leave the two kids in the middle with no incentive to work hard, the players on the outside get lazy. It's too easy. So what we will do with the next activity is this. As soon as they win the ball, the two in the middle... They will release, go outside the grid, and players that we have sitting down there to Michael, they will jump in. So, Michael, in about a minute or two, we're going to need green substitutes for here and blue substitutes for here. All right? And let's play. That's well done down there, green. Well done. Yes. Keep it moving. Yes. And time. Let's do this. New defenders in for both groups. And here's what we'll do. For the green team down here, gentlemen, what we will do is you get a grand total of three balls. So if the blue steals it from you and they knock it out, that's one ball done. 
Then we'll go to the second ball, the third one. You count the total number of passes that you guys obtain getting all three. Got it? Blue team. Same thing. You get a maximum of. You're counting. You can get past 10, right? Do you need to take off the shoes? Okay, good. Three balls. As soon as you two win it, you get out. Your two partners come in. All right? We ready? Wait. Michael, so each side is playing a grand total of three balls. And let's play. The main purpose of changing defenders is so that you crank up the tempo so fast that you see, do we need to make the grid larger? And I think this grid is about the right size for them. And how much do they enjoy playing with the ball? Do they take it as a challenge to see how many passes that they can get? Push it out, yes. We ready to go here? Blue team, you've got two balls down. Let's get the third one and let's play. And if you look at their spatial awareness, and we play. Yes. Well done, Blue. Yes. Yes. And time. Let's pull the ball back here. <coughs> Can you show me another possibility other than the ball that was straight through? Because he came into the middle, which was good. How did you play him the ball on the floor or in the air? In the air. Could it have been a different service to him that would have made it easier? On the ground? Are there any other places that you could have went to? If he steps in, where did you notice the two greens were going to? Good. So what would that leave open for you? Yeah. All right. Let's play again. It's live on the first touch. We ready? And play. Good. Yes. Come on, come on, let's go, Green. Come on, let's play. We on a third ball or second ball? Let's play. Yes. And we play. Well done. Now we're working, gentlemen. Well done. Yes. Blue, can you catch it? Blue, can you catch it? Blue, can you catch it? Blue. Stop! Blue, come over here for a second. Do you feel like you're on a wagon just spinning like this? That's how I felt. Here's what I would suggest that you guys do. If you attack the ball, can you tell him which way you'd like to pressure the ball? Whether it go to the left or to the right? Whatever you say. You two work together, but if you listen to each other, you guys can get out of the middle of the grid a little bit sooner. Okay? Let's try it again. All right? We're on. Let's try. And we play. Which way do you force them? So if you notice, which players are more prone to do the communicating? The attacking ones or the defending ones? Usually it's the attacking ones because when you defend, it's hard work. Now you get fatigued. But you can teach attacking or defending in a simple two versus four or four versus two, however you'd like to say it, within this game. But if you find players that are struggling, you're going to have to stop them and talk about it. The one defender said he'd like to push him to the left. Okay, well, let's try that. Does the game dictate that, or is that what he likes to do? In his mind, he likes to do that. Well, let's let him try it. Sooner or later, through trial and error, he will figure out it's whatever the game dictates. We ready, gentlemen? Let's play. Goalkeeper, you can go down if you need to. In time, let's stop. Let's use this group as a demonstration group. Open it up here green. Let's go with the blue. Goalkeeper, you can use these if you need to. All right? How about... If you start to approach him, do you know which foot his strong foot is? Which one's his weak one? His right's the strong one? You're sure? Okay. So how about if we make him play it to his left? If we do that, 
Which way would you like to approach him? Keep going. Stop. You're his partner, right? Tell me which two places he can now play the ball if he's going to force him onto his left foot. There's one. Good. So you don't have to run as much. Which one do you want to make sure you cut off? Let's see. If you go stand there, good. So come on back here then. Now, if you play it to him, go ahead, stop. Good, wait. This is excellent. You've now cut it off, and you want him to play back where? Perfect. And now, where can't you let him go? Okay, and where else? Well, let's try it and see. All right, let's walk through. Come on back here. You put it on your foot. Let's walk through it. Go ahead. There, there. Now, look at your angle. Can he play it to him? Oh, I like it now. I like it. You took the half a step. How about if you take another half a step? And you're there. Now which way does he have to play to this half of the grid? You guys don't have to run as much. Play there. We're ready. We're ready. We're ready. We're live. Let's go play. Yes, that's well done. Now you two didn't win it, but he knocks the ball out of bounds. All right? And let's play. That small session with them will help me when I get to the larger games. Because when you defend, besides one-on-one -on -one duels that you have to deal with, you should be defending in small groups. As soon as you get a friend, you become a group. But how do you approach the ball? Which way do you force it? What you will notice here still is if we listen, listen to the ones who talk. It's still the attacking players. But let's see what they do. Next ball, in with Michael. The one thing in which you'll see with defending is if you run hard enough and if you run fast enough at a young age, you will more likely disrupt the flow of play. The problem that we run into is if we don't teach them to run at the proper angle and to slow the run down as they approach the ball, by the time that they get to 16, 17, they can never catch the ball because the technical players have raised the bar. So they have to be taught at a young age of four versus two what's the proper speed that you attack and the angle. And time. Let's do this. Michael, if we could now clear these grids with them, all of them back there with you, let's see if we can go to two versus two versus two. And yes, and let's see, Michael, if you can also have them pick up the dots and move them back about two strides to your left. <clears throat> the one concern that you run into is whenever you go with grids, kids will a lot of times lock themselves into standing in a corner, and it just kills any sort of movement. So this game in which you're going to see here shortly is a very simple one, they should have a diamond, and what you're playing is four versus two, the same game, but whatever team does not have the ball, they must defend. What are you looking for? Check and see if you see any shape, because that's going to be my one question to them. Do they have any shape, or do they just run? Still blues in. And let's play. And let's play. Now we've got it. Time stop. Great ball. Back where you were. Now let me ask you this. After you played the ball to him, where was your first step, if you can remember? Okay, it was here. Your second step should have then been here. Now, knock him back the ball. Now, do me a favor. When you stand there, show me your correct body shape. How should you be standing? And why would you want to stand like that? Perfect. 
because now that gives you the field vision. So let's go back here again. Ball goes to you. You're going to play to him. Defenders, where are you? Blue, you defending? Ah, wait. On the first touch, it's live. So as soon as he plays it to him, you're good. Now you can't go over there and stand, all right? We're ready. Go ahead and play. Go ahead, play. And you're on. Yes. Good. Now they figured it out. And stop. Look at the shape. Look at the shape. In every activity you do, the first two or three minutes are just utter yuck because they're so anxious to play. You let them play, but now look at them. They've spread themselves out. Here's the smart one. He's figured out that if he stays down here far enough away, by the time that the ball travels to him, he's going to have enough time and space to style and profile to look to play to other people. So let's go back to the original spot with the ball. And we play. Yes. And we play. Come on, Blue. Come on, there you go. Come on, Blue. Orange is in. The great thing about this game is there's no downtime. It's teaching them that they have to transition. And if you lose the ball, okay, just go back and get it. How many times do we get little kids that after they lose the ball, the head goes down, and now they're frustrated? Their teammates may be yapping at them or somebody on the sides. Oh, goodness. In this game here, if you lose it, just go get it. So let's see if they can create the shape again on their own. Orange is still in. Orange is still in. Stop. Here's my question. You played him a good ball, then where were you off to? Okay? To get it back, but here's my question. After we played it here, those two your teammates, right? Why do they need you over here with them. And I'll tell you something. I'll bet you if you play it and walk right over here, he'll give it back to you. Because which way are those two going to face? Whichever way the ball goes. So let's play it back to him. <clears throat> you play it to him, and then let's play again. Let's go. Greens are in. Technically, they do a wonderful job. The dilemma that we still have to work on is their spacing and is their shape. Because now, stop! If you look at them, do they have a diamond shape? And play. Play. How many passes does he have? How many passes does he have? Orange is in. Orange is in. Orange is in. Orange is in. Good. Early, here it is, yes. And we play. Blue is now in. Good. Stop. Play here. Play here. You did the right thing. You only had one pass, didn't you? Who else is on your team? <laughs> Good. We can't hide in shadows of other players. So just come down here because he needs a break. He's going to stay down there, and you guys are going to play three versus one right here. Okay? We ready? You look marvelous now with the socks up there. Perfect. All right, let's play. Yep, now help him. Good. Oh, you're in? Oh, well. Play. Green is still in. Green is still in. 
Good. Which way? And we play. Blues in. That's well done. Stay there. Yes, that's well done. Stop! You guys hate that when he plays it through there, don't you? Are you guys telling him which way to play it? Which way to force him? I know. Catch your breath. Okay, play. Yes, that's fine. So once again, when you play four versus two with them, depending on what topic you want to work on for the day, it can be a defensive topic or it can be an attacking topic. Michael, how about if we change them in for the last one, let the other ones now, let's play two versus two versus two. Let's see another group in. The one thing which I would tell you, coaches, is when you do the session, pick your theme and follow it through the entire day. If you're electing to do defending, then you work on defending for the entire day. You can manipulate the activity so that your attacking team makes it more difficult for your defenders, but you've got to pick a theme. Today, mine is not defending or attacking, but the progression. I've got to try to get this shape into their mind so that it becomes natural. And they've started to do it here the last two or three sessions as far as playing. Blues in. Let's play. Ah, that's well done. And we play. If you notice, watch their body language. Some of them lock themselves into one direction. Others open up the field. And we're going to stop them here again in about 30 seconds to make one more coaching point so we can start to see how this all works. Blue is in. It's green and red versus blue. Well done. And time, stop. Put the ball back in the end for orange. And let's take a look at it. We're going to have to point this out to our players, but now let's pretend that we're playing a real game and you're going to that goal. That's the goal you're defending. Which player would you more likely be on the field? Would you be a defender, midfielder, or forward? If you'd be a defender, who would he more likely be on your team? He'd be an outside midfielder. Who would he more likely be? Central midfielder. And who would he be? The forward. Do you remember seeing this any time earlier today? I'm hoping you're saying yes. Good man. Ready? Let's play. Play it straight through. And we play. But it's the smallest component of the game, the diamond, that if you can show them how this works within the game, it's going to be much more effective. What we will do here next is we will play four versus four, and we will show them how to play with that diamond and get to a goal. So, gentlemen, we got 30 more seconds. Let's play. Play the way you face. Oh, where did you go? You ran away from him. Blues in. Blues in. Keep it. Keep it. Yep, just keep it. Good. Just keep it. Blues still in. Yes, that's well done. And time. Mr. Green, if we could, if we, I would like to enlarge this by about two strides, and let's get four versus four with an end zone. 
So the next activity that you're going to see after we play two versus two versus two is we're going to allow them to play four versus four. We're going to add goalkeepers, but I'm not sending them to goal yet. What we will do is, in this rectangle, we're going to play four versus four going the natural way that the field is. What we will also set, set up down at that end and down here are two end zones that the attacking team must dribble into. We're also now putting in goalkeepers. What I want the goalkeepers to do is to defend that end zone, but the other thing that I'm going to tell the goalkeepers is nobody's allowed to touch them when they have the ball at their feet in the end zone. Because think about it. Are your goalkeepers technically sound as far as field players? Or do they need a little bit of development? So to build their confidence, I'm giving them a safety zone that they can play in. The defending team can also go into that safety zone to receive a pass. So it's almost, in essence, we're playing four field players and a goalkeeper with no pressure of that additional space against four. And we will see how it will work. So let's do this. Can I get four blues down at that side? Give me four greens up here at this side, and give me a goalkeeper in each end. So goalkeeper, in order for the blue team to score, they must dribble into this end zone. You must defend it. When the ball is at your feet in here, none of them are allowed to touch you. But I'd like you to play quickly, maybe two touch, okay? Gentlemen, same thing, four versus four. For you guys to score, what do you have to do? Right, into the end zone. What's that? See where the blue cones are? That's your end zone. Yes, can definitely use your hands. This is your goal, big guy, the entire thing. We ready? And we play. Now nah, you got to dribble across the line. Passing doesn't count. Still 0-0. Zero, zero. Let's play. And if you notice, look at their shape. Do they have somebody to take them up high? Do they have somebody to take them up high, or have they all moved back towards the goal? And we'll have to see whether this space is too tight or not. It may be. One nil. Good guys. Stop. Stop. Goalkeeper, take the ball again. Take the ball again. Blue team, look at your shape. Look at your shape. Look at your shape. You are a good man. Keep walking. Keep walking. You are marvelous. You're a defender right now, correct? Do you like the goalkeeper giving you a ball where you're not able to face your goal? So how can you show me where you could stand to get it so you'd feel more comfortable? I'll even let you go back a little bit more to your left. A little bit more. 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 Nobody can touch you in there. Now play it in front of them. And now we can play. Now wait a minute. There we go. Let's play. Yes. Yep, we're going to have more width. That's well done. Ah, but you didn't get across with it. Unlucky. Green team, you've got it. Let's play. Green, where's your shape? Where's your shape? Where's your shape? Yes. Notice the first touch of the green team. Puts them right back into the negative. And play. That's well done, Blue. Ball's out. Goes to the keeper. Goes to the keeper. And let's play.
Michael, next time out, when I stop them, we're going to need more space. Okay? We're going to need more width to it. Next time. Yes, get in, get in. And time. Balls out to the goalkeeper. Let's stop. Green team, if you would, get into your shape. Get into your shape. Get into your shape. Now, my question is, who's my man, target man way up top? Who's somebody that's going to stretch the defense for me? Good. Now, goalkeeper, you ready? Where's your shape at? Do you have somebody way up top you can throw to? Do you have somebody out wide you can throw to? So let's throw it here. Stop. I like the run. Continue your run. Continue your run. Keep coming. Don't move. Good. Notice how you've turned side on. The further that you come this way, will he follow you the entire way? If he does, I'm hoping. Code. Let's go. Keep sliding. Keep sliding. He wants you to follow him. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. What space does it now open up for? And what shape are we still in? And you started over there, didn't you, as a midfielder. And now you're the big man up top. So if I give you the ball, can you show me some magic? You're sure? We're going to find out. Just play it right between my legs. Go ahead. And play. Play. Play to him. Yes. And let's go. Ball's out. Goes to green. The hardest thing for them to understand at this age is the shape and the angles. They're so eager to get the ball that a lot of times they will leave their shape just to go after the ball. And because at this age they can catch it because technically they may or may not be sound enough, they'll be rewarded. Yes, that's well tackled. Now can you get across? The whole purpose of the end zones is to try to reward for kids to take players on and dribble. Dribble, dribble, dribble. The one thing which I can always defend against as a youth coach is a passing team. Because sooner or later, after five or six passes, they'll give it back to me. But the thing that scares me to death is when I get that one magical player who does things that are totally unexpected, and it's usually they put their head down and they tell everybody, bye, I'm going on a run. And those situations are usually created or fostered that environment within this, where you allow them to take players on and just run at people. Let's play blue. That's well done. Go ahead. Take him on. And let's play keeper. Get your shape before you throw out that ball. And it's out to the goalkeeper. Wait a minute, keeper. Wait. Wait. Now, let me ask you a question, keeper. Whenever there's a goal scored on you, and I know it's very rare, but does everybody blame you? So when you have the ball, you throw it out when you're ready. Everybody knows your name when you've got it because they think you're special. It's because they want that. Stay special as long as you can. Once they get their shape, then you can give it to them. Okay? Let's play. And time. Let's go back here again to my goalkeeper. i got to reinvent that pass. Hold it. You're giving it to him. Wait. Start where you were because you did a great Kodak moment. All right? Let's go one time here. Now we play here and stop. Which way are you facing? No, you did right. The way that you came for the ball, you're facing that way, right? So where is the only place you can really play it safely? That's a good option. You've got one or two, right? So now let's do this. Keep or hold it. How about if you start a little bit more over here? Tell him to get away. Go away, go away, go away. As soon as you see the ball there, well, you can. You've got two options. Let's play one there. I can hold you here, and now, where's a good place to play the ball? Yeah, that's one opportunity. 
Okay, let's go back to them again. Let's just say that you're extremely quick, which I've heard you are. If you get to the sideline, which way do you want to be standing when you receive the ball? Can you go over there and show me? Now, if you receive it that way, where's the only place that you can probably play? Show or point where you can probably play the next ball to. Yeah. How about if you do this? Come this way. Open up your body like this. Now, he might be able to steal it, huh? But if I keep inching back this way, I'll bet you he'll leave you alone. And when he does, give me that one. Now look where I can go. But if you're this way, mm, back to my keeper, back to my keeper, back to my keeper. And we play goalkeeper. Let's go. Back to him. You're gonna get, yes. Yes, that's well done. And keeper, you've got it. And stop. Gentlemen, if you could, can you pick up the flat disc and the blue ones? Leave the green ones alone. Michael, we're now going to... The next session is four versus four plus. So if you've noticed, we've been with the diamond shape. If I go with a diamond, that gives me my four. My goalkeeper's five. Now the question is, where do I put my two other players? So what we're going to do here is we're going to open it up to the big field. We're now going to play four versus four. So I keep my blue team and my green team. But now I put on two neutral players that are going to play for both teams. Without telling them anything, let's see where they position themselves when they have the ball. Because now it's going to end up being six field players and a goalkeeper versus four. It may start to lull some if it's too easy because four versus six Ah, we're going to play that by ear and see how it does. But let's see how the six organize themselves attacking-wise out on the field. And let's see if they can come up with the shapes in which we want before we go to eight versus eight. So blue team, when you have the ball, you also have the two players in red. When you lose the ball, they've now gone over to the green team. Green team, same thing for you. When you have it, you've got the two reds. When you lose it, it's the four of you against the six of them. All right? I don't know if Mr. Green told you, but we're playing here for, I'll give you four minutes. Losing teams buying water over there at the drinks. Losing teams buying water. Okay? Blue seems to have it. Let's go ahead and play. So we'll let the game go for a few minutes here because they're always anxious. Now we've got them to a goal. They can play again. Let's see if they figure out a system of play. Stop. Let's go back to the corner with the ball. Stop. Go back to the corner with the ball. Green team, do me a favor. Go down on one knee. Green team, do me a favor. Blue team, do you have a good shape? Do you have a good shape? Do we have somebody up high? Do we have people wide? Do we have people wide? Do we have people wide? There we go. How many players do we now have in the back for the attacking team? How many players? Can you raise your hand if you're playing in the back for the attacking team right now? Can you raise your hand? Can you raise your hand if you're playing on the attacking team if you're defending in the back? One, raise your hand please. 
Hi. Two, raise your hand. Who are my three across the middle? One, two, where's your third one? Is it now in the middle? Okay. And who's my player up top? We ready? Let's play. Let's play. They do a nice job of moving the ball, but if you notice at this age, energy and aggressiveness still kills the flow of the play six versus four. Still kills the flow of the play. It's a kick in. Let's play. Keeper, where's your shape? Where's your shape with them? And we play. Have it. That's right. Come on, let's go. Let's play. Blue, you're on. And freeze. Stop right there. Stop. Notice how the blue team has slowly organized them into the proper space. They've got one player wide, two players wide. They've got two coming out of the back, although you came from the central midfield, didn't you? He was probably in the back and moved forward, which means now, do we have too many players on this side? Maybe, maybe not. Look behind you. If you come over to me, and you play the ball out wide over there. Do they need you there? Something to think about. Go back. Go back to where you were. And now you have options. You have the ball. Let's go ahead and play. Ideally what we're looking for is they still totally don't feel comfortable with the diamonds yet. But it will eventually come, as we will see with green team here. And let's play. Let's play. So the purpose of the two midfielders, the two in orange, one of them should hopefully be staying around the middle of the field because they're naturally going to feel like they always attack the ball and get that. And then one will usually float and hang like the gentleman out here. Well, he will be the wide one. You've got it. Yes. Let the ball do the work. Let the ball do the work. It's a marvelous finish, but you've got to put it home when you go on that dribble. And let's play keeper. Grab a ball. Yes, good decision. Ball's out. Going to blue. Going to blue. And let's play. Let's play. Time. Now, here's my question. Back there with the ball. Go ahead. Start with me here. Ball goes back to that player. Come to me here. Come to me here. When you received that last ball, which way were you facing? Do you remember? Okay. Let's walk through it. You ran this way. He played you the ball. And you were, that's about the way it was. Marvelous. Now, 
Look where he went. Where were you going then? So here's my question. If he loses it, who's back to help? I enjoy your energy coming forward, but what if he pulls a magical moment and comes this way? Now who's going to do your job of getting forward? Those guys. All right? So I'd like your energy to get forward, but play a little bit more with this instead of this to help you out. This was an awkward ball over here, wasn't it? Where are you going to go with it? So you may have to do two things. Come on back with me. As you see that he's looking up, you may have to get over to that line and face me. Go ahead and do that. Perfect. Face me. Now, if you take one more step back that way, that eliminates him from getting to you too soon. Let's play him. And now, yes, look how you can play forward. And you know something? His energy is working again. Because I know you were looking to come here, weren't you? And you know something? If he can turn and face this way, go ahead. Wait. Because now where are you going to go? So where is he? Get back down there. I like it. Ah, poor touch. Must be these shoes. Play here. But stop. Before you guys play can you show me the shape that your team is in? Do you see a diamond anywhere? Do you see a diamond? Yeah, it's still there, isn't it? When you ran, what did he do? He came to support. Look where he's at. He's in great position. Maybe one more block over. Perfect. And who's sitting at the back post just waiting? Marvelous. I know you've got him. He's got no chance today. All right? He hasn't even played the game yet. We ready? Give me the ball. On the first touch, let's play. That's well done. You faced the right way. Perfect. And Mr. Green, if we could at the next stoppage of play, add players so that we can get to eight versus eight. Let's do that now. Let's stop. The two orange, you're off. Blue stay on, green stay on. Mr. Green, can I get four more players so that I've got, I'm sorry, three more, so I have eight greens and eight blues? So the two oranges, the two oranges. You guys set up your own personal shape. Coaches, the last step to this, we may or may not have time for, but we're going to show you something after they get started play here. Are we ready, keeper? Are we ready? Let's play. You've noticed each time that we've gone through this session where we played the diamond, we were playing with a grand total of one forward. As soon as you introduce a second forward to the mix, we have to regress back and teach forwards how to play with each other because they've never had anybody up there with them before. And we'll show you that hopefully. We'll spend some time and do that here very shortly. But let's see if they start to form their shapes and their diamonds. And we play keeper. Yes, that's well done. Let the ball do the work. Let the ball do the work. Goes to blue. Stop. Wait a minute. Is there anybody back there in case you guys lose it? No? Okay. We'll see what happens. Go ahead. I hope you score. You got a long run. Oh, see ya.
and freeze. Let's do this. Ball plays down here to the goalkeeper. Green team, let's do this for me so I can show the coaches the last thing. Ball plays here to the keeper. I need two defenders for green standing right here. I need three midfielders for green, one wide, one in the middle, and one wide, and give me two target players up top. You don't? Sure you do. Look, we've got more. Give me one, Mr. Green. Give me one. Give me one more. Yep. Green. Yep. Ah, there he is. We only had two in the back. Somebody can't count. My fault. Hold him off. Hold him off. Hold him off. Give me one of the defenders to come up high. Come on for me. We've got to show the coaches this last part. As soon as you introduce two forwards to your team, they run into a dilemma. They used to have a diamond shape over here. Step there, you step there. But now the question is, they can play within their small group, but how do they play and complement each other? It can be a through ball, but let's show this. Bump the ball to my central midfielder here. The two of you now, if you would, just take one knee. If you would, take one knee. Now what we would have to do is get into our session of three midfielders and two target players. I don't know how you guys were taught, but let's look at options. You can play wide or side by side where maybe you're going to run away from the ball, hopefully dragging him away and you're going to check to this space hopefully for the ball to be here that's one option alright knock it back another option might be stay you sit in here short that you may be always the player that plays up close to the midfield and you're always the one that attacks and you now come up here a little bit higher and now notice he walked with you already doesn't he what space does it open up? Big gap there and a big gap there. You may be the one that makes the diagonal runs so that he could play a ball straight through. So let's see how this works. Here's what we got. We're bumping one here, you're bumping it back, and then you're playing the ball to the space. So you're going to check here, get the ball, play it back, and on the second touch, where are you going? Second touch. Let's play. One, two. Ah, let's try it again. You're too good. Just wait. You play right back to him. Let's go. Everything's stagnant. One, play back to him, and now it's through. We ready? We're on. Let's play. Let's play. 30 seconds. Game's to one. Let's see what we got. Game's to one. Zero, zero, gentlemen. Nothing. Keeper balls to the left. Defender, you're too wide over here. Got to move a little bit more to the middle to support. Good. What I do is at the end of my session when I allow them to play and I tell them 30 seconds and one goal. I'm done coaching because all of a sudden if I see a breakdown and some kids going to goal and you stop it just as he's ready to knock it home nah, you've destroyed their game so usually we will step out of it I'm gonna give them a countdown we're at 15 seconds 13 11 9 we're still at 9 Seven, five, four, three, two, one, and time. Gentlemen, if you could, line up right over here with me. Line up right over here with me. Right along this line.
Ladies and gentlemen, what I'd like you to do is give them a round of applause because they've done a fantastic job this morning. <laughs> gentlemen, I thank you being in a audience this big coming out here this morning. I thank you for your effort. You did a marvelous job. I appreciate that. I'd like to thank Michael Green, my assistant, who's helped me with that. And I have been told by the gentleman that after the session is done, they will be available for autographs over near the PA system. Thank you all for coming out this morning. I appreciate it. Thank you very much.